Does this mean that we're not considering the request for the two trucks tonight? Uh, no, no, we're doing well, that. No, we can. Yeah. We haven't heard you. You left out the trucks. Yeah, Rich. And the electric Richie. tarp. Rich. Rich. You left out the trucks and the tarp. You want to talk about the trucks and the tarp? You did the dump body. You didn't do the... We don't want it. With the stainless steel dump body, also, there's a tarp system uh, that would go with that. Um, my memory on that is But that's also required, right? Yes. That's required. You need the tarp. And instead of us spending the $1,750 on the tarp system, along with this new stainless steel dump body, I was able to get a tarp system that's just as good, just that it's not name brand for about $1,350. I don't have the paper in front of me. 1395. There you go. Thank you. You know, one more quick thing. I'll tell you what Nick does. Uh, the air seat in our grader blew out just from age. A new air seat is $900. Eugene Lavolpe does a great job. Eugene with sanitation brought in two brand new dumpsters that do not fit our forklifts or our sanitation department. So Nick got in touch with Carmel Highway today. They had an extra air seat. They wanted the two dumpsters. We went down and we did a trade-off. So right away, it was at $900 savings. And that's the kind of you know, horse trading that you do. So Make sure you put a note in your inventory that that happened somehow. That never happened. But what oh, about the one-ton trucks? One. You don't want those? Yeah. yeah, that's what we're going to get, the two one-tons. Well, you didn't talk about it. Oh, I thought I just did. <laughs> Is no, it in your equipment crazy. line? What's that? Is it in your equipment budget? It's in my equipment budget, yes. The ones not to exceed 72,000? Yes, the, the, the Terra Star that we're getting, that was ordered last year, we still haven't arrived yet. That's why it's important that we talk about this now, because when you order a truck, it's not until four to six months later. But these are um, bigger than the one tons we were getting, but they're smaller than the Terra Star, so it, it, it was affordable within this budget, and they're, they're good medium trucks. Um, and, you know, that comes with a sander and a plow, and we'll have two of those plus the Terra Star. So we're going to have three new trucks for the fleet this year. And these are the ones you use for the intersections, right? Yep. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be able to hit some good plow routes. But you can do a and lot hopefully of some military pickups or, you know, forestry pickups. Because they used to be, when, I, when I'm being told by Louis Strickland, who's the senior, I, I rely on Louis a lot for information. Um, they used to be one big truck and one pickup for every route in the town. And now we're down to like, you know. We have two, two really pickups left. I was plowing with my own pickup because when I go by, people see me, and I was plowing the intersections with my private pickup this year. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to invite um, Lou Fernandez, the Director of Recreation, to talk about Start Smart hirings. Good evening. I had written a letter to the town board regarding the Start Smart baseball personnel for 2015. Um, generally, we like to have one instructor for every 10 to 12 participants, including Jared Kuzensky, who is the coordinator, so he is factored into that. So this year we have, I say, approximately 54 sign-ups, so I would ask to hire four Start Smart personnel. Uh, I have them listed, Mike Mendez, Brian Spasado, Joe Rebus, and Ashley Heiss um, for the Start Smart Baseball at $140 for the, the program. It's a six-week program, uh, runs on Saturdays, an hour each day, <coughs> clean up and, and whatnot. It's about an hour and a half, two-hour program each Saturday. My only question would be, I think last time, we were hiring assistants, and the board seemed very interested in posting uh, the jobs. This letter seems to be dated after we had that discussion, and yet we're not posting the jobs again. So real quick, what's up? Okay, uh, you know, and, and I understand that, and there are positions that I would definitely, you know, understand posting. No, I know, but the board made it pretty clear that even this type of position, we would appreciate posting. I don't think there was any ambiguity in, in this board's position last meeting. I per personally, professionally, I, I would have to disagree with this type of position. Um, I, I understand for a seasonal position, 
but in a program that is like this, that is a, a short program, but in a very important program with the type of personnel, um, a 20 minute or f even half hour interview uh, would not tell me what I need to know as far as having worked with these people or having them volunteered in, in the program from before. Um, because of the, the nature of it, if somebody in this type of program were to start and not work out, by the time I would come back to the town board, I would, the, the program would be over. And I would not have, uh, then I'd be short staffed for the program. Yeah, I understand, but you understand how basically the governing body of this town says X, and then you say, well, I just disagree. And after I give you the letter and come up here, I'm just going to say, listen, thanks, but no thanks to that opinion. So, I mean, it's, you know, I would have hoped that this discussion would have been had when we asked. Uh, for the posting to happen the first time, and then you could give us this opinion, and then maybe our minds would have been changed. But instead, we are left in a situation where we probably have to approve this, even though uh, I don't think that was the intention of the board last meeting. And I'm, maybe I'm speaking out of line, but I think uh, for the four of us that were here, we were interested in having these positions mm -hmm. as low as they may be in the totem pole and as different as they may be. Hey, have an interview. See who else may want to apply. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe that was my fault. My understanding was that that was interested in seasonal positions, long-term positions, positions that were going to be earning a few thousand dollars um, that would be working nine, 10, 12 weeks um, up to you know 40 hours a week. Uh, if I misunderstood that, then I apologize. My belief for this type of program is that it is far better suited to have people that we are familiar with. Right, and I don't think anybody's disputing that, Lou. I think, I think that the, the issue is that we really should advertise for all open positions. And if you anticipated that this was gonna, and I know it's a short program and it's not a lot of money, and you probably do wanna hire somebody that has experience, but though, the experience and the, the knowledge about the program are factors that you take into consideration when making a decision who to hire. I still think you have to have, you know, uh, have it open to everybody because there might be people in town that have worked at this program, maybe not in the town, but understand the program. Um, you know, you don't know who there is out there until, until you cast the net. And when I saw this memo, I mean, I sent it around to board members, um, I, and I was a little disappointed too because I think we're between a rock and a hard place at this point because if the program starts at the end of April, we certainly don't have an opportunity now to advertise because it wouldn't go into the paper till next Tuesday, which you know is the end of of April. So, um, but you know, in the future, if you know some, you know when this is coming up, I think. You know, throwing it in an ad and and seeing who we get is not a is not e a bad e idea. I think a it's a very good policy. idea. Make a formal policy. Mm -hmm. the then that's what we may have to do. Yeah, I think then we have to do that. And this uh -huh. way, going forward, mm -hmm. it doesn't even, reoccur and include all the politics. Yeah. And even if it doesn't necessarily mean you have to sit them all down for an interview, you know, it's a right, absolutely. taking in of resumes and oh, okay, well I've worked with these guys here, their resume sounds good, and then you give us a recommendation. I think it's more of a principle of it that we seemed predisposed to just let everybody apply and that wasn't the, the tack taken here. But, you know, I'm going to approve it, but... I understand that. I, I don't have an issue. That was my misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. I thought that, you know, for seasonal personnel and long term, or even you know people that would be working 20, 40 hours a week. I understand. I don't have an issue doing it for this as well. Um, you know, we run this program three times a year with different mm -hmm. you know um, different sports, and I do not have an issue if the town board wants for any position, whether it be a um, you know a scorekeeper or a start smart assistant or a seasonal who is going to work nine or 12 weeks. Um, that is not an issue. I, you know, I will definitely comply with the town mm -hmm. board going forward with that. Um, I think that would be a good policy in the future to, to absolutely yeah, have. Just right. to add my two cents, in past years, we sent out news releases, uh, got permission from the town board, sent out news releases at the beginning of the year, any positions open the whole year, and kids would apply. 
but before, you know, we used to have day camps and stuff. We don't have them anymore. But um, and these these jobs, um, these jobs are not even seasonal. They're, you know, but short term. Short term stuff. Right. Right. But uh, overall, I would put down whatever the, the needs of the rec department and include that in your in a major release. Get permission from the mm -hmm. town board, and then and then you've you've taken care of. In my opinion, yeah, that's a good you've idea. You've taken care of that. Uh, I would like residents hired, um, uh, you know, for these jobs. But and I understand that. And if the town board would like me to, at the beginning of the year get approval for all positions to be, you know, either put out at the beginning of the year or a few times during the year to either send, uh, you know, go out through the newspaper or through the school district, depending on the type of position, you know, we, we can come to a decision on how that would best serve the department okay. and the town, and we can move forward. And with you will yeah. get 100 kids to I think apply, that's guaranteed. Right, and you don't have to interview all of them, obviously. But you're still needed for the other departments, mm -hmm. highway, like all mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, absolutely. Combine everything and, and put out one policy. To the town clerk that's a great idea. I mean, I can put out, you know, for seasonal type positions, like, you know, the park maintenance, that would maybe be a different thing than for positions that work directly with programs and children. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that is not an issue. We can, we can do it that way okay. moving forward. Okay. You know. okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item on the workshop agenda is the building department clerk, and I'm going to um, be tabling that. We're still interviewing. Um, and I would like to move up item nine, the discussion of Weinstein Enterprises, because we have um, Mike Caruso is here this evening. But he, now he has to stop billing. <laughs> Now you have to stop billing. You were really racking up the hours <laughs> we can let today. You sit, we can let you sit there all night. Phone and the scrolling. So. Nothing like a colleague who knows my wicked ways. <laughs> so good evening, everyone. I trust you've had the opportunity to um, review the proposal we have mm -hmm. submitted. Okay. Again, forgive my math and the methods I used, but I thought it was the... the plainest, most direct means of, of putting together some form of a fee to reflect, um, I guess we could call it the town's interest uh, in parting ways or any, with any interest in this uh, tiny piece of land. Uh, oh, they didn't prepare. Yeah, this is the here. letter. No, they didn't do it, but this is the letter. We got this a couple of weeks ago. Does Mike see this? This was sent to all board members a while back. Yeah. Um, Weinstein Enterprises is suggesting a payment yes, of yes. $615.31 for this strip of uh, land that they've been paying the taxes on and maintaining even after this decision in 1992. Any problems, Council, with this? Any problem? In theory, no. I mean, it's it's really a business decision that the town board has to make at this point. And just let me say, if you do decide to sell it for a certain amount of money, it's subject to permissive referendum, so there would be a mandatory waiting period. Okay. Thank you. They've been paying taxes on this land for years, right? Apparently. Yeah. Yes. The whole time. Okay. The only thing that I discussed, I think we discussed briefly on record last time, uh, permissive referendum or not, we were still looking to uh, clear title by commencing an action but resolving it just as quickly with a consent judgment. What that would do, we'd actually have to make the town a party to a litigation only to memorialize a settlement by a judgment um, that would basically read that any interest the town does or formerly had in this piece of property, uh, it thereby absolves itself of uh, and you know would vest back into Weinstein, uh, effectively memorializing what we're trying to do here. So that would be more from my client just to clear title so this we, doesn't come back. We don't need it so ordered, do we? Um, we should, yeah. They, they definitely are going to need a court order quieting title in, in Weinstein's name at, at that point. You know, going forward, that's the only way they're really going to prove that they're the owner after this. Even if we stick to it? It's and have to stick and to the clerk? Yeah. Discontinues uh, with? Like a so-ordered stipulation of uh, settlement? 
I mean, I would prefer you have, to go with... You haven't formally commenced the action. You had sent us a proposed... Yeah, we would... The only thing we would do is ministerially commence it in court. Yeah. We'd immediately send you the consent judgment, which would have a little bit stronger effect than a stipulation. A stipulation courts could more readily toss aside, we'll say, but with the court having a stamp of approval on it, I guess you could say, in the form of a judgment, um, resolving the issue between the parties, I think it's a little cleaner that way for all parties, actually. I don't, I don't have any objection to the point that I just don't want to spend any money re receipt and reviewing this. Uh summons and complaint and yeah. mm -hmm. it would be an endorsed pleading one page the, the you know we would keep the facts very simple and i provide a copy of the consent judgment and draft before we even commence the action so you know exactly what you receive try to take as little time as possible of the towns um, you know, to resolve it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. obviously we'll get the final yes. so do we want to that's what you got to do to clear title that's what you have to yeah. do yeah do we want to vote on this then this evening? I'm fine. We might as well get this guy yeah. out That's, of the way. Yeah, let's, he's been hanging around. So oh, but I mean, he, you're right. He might be able to build for another really meeting if we. Time. <laughs> oh, the Purple Heart was a hard act to follow. Yeah. So <laughs> nice to see that. Though. All right, Mike. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. The only thing, Supervisors, I did not prepare a formal resolution for this matter. So if you want to adopt something, and then I'll, I can draft something tomorrow for you. Yeah, I think we could just uh, okay. we could just adopt something. Thank okay. You. Okay. The next item is uh, town email. We have discussed this um, briefly, um, Chief Devaneri and um, I and Rich Harris, our IT specialist, have been in discussions with the county about moving our email over to the county server. They um, currently, our email is attached, and as anybody who has tried to email members of this board understands, um, frequently our emails bounce back because we have very limited capacity. Our website is really ready to go. I mean, we still you know, can tweak it, and that's the beauty of it, is that we control it so we can tweak it any time. We've just been holding up the go live date because we, um, since our email is connected to our current website, um, we can't go live on our new website until we have our email someplace. So the county has um, offered us, and it would basically be a pilot program to use their servers. It would be, you know, um, shared services, which, you know, everybody likes getting credit for at this point. Um, it would be at no cost to the town. We would have almost unlimited capacity on the server. And it has been suggested, I was discussing this with Bruce Walker, um, the deputy county executive. Um, he and I both are on the Fiscal Vision and Accountability Commission for the county that we present this to that commission at our meeting on April 29th. Um, and uh, you know, I believe they would approve it, and then we could basically flip the switch within a couple of days on both the email and our new website. My only concern it would be the language of the agreement uh, as as to who is who owns the email, our privacy, our security. Um, I would have to see the language before I would vote yes for it. And that I was hoping to have, I was discussing that with um, Bruce Walker, and he said hopefully we were supposed to get something yesterday, and I was hoping to have it for the board, and um, I was unable to reach him. Um, he was in meetings all day to get a copy of that. But if we could, uh, you know, so I don't know if we want to wait for the next meeting, which puts it off, you know, another half week. Um, but um, as soon as I get something, I would forward it to board members so that if we take a vote, you know, that people would be ready to take a vote that night. And again, it would be a pilot program. We have looked into um, the web, the email through our website, which is a paid by um, licensee 
um, service, which also has to be installed on individual com computers, and it's a, it's a little more of a cumbersome system, and it would be an expense to the town, whereas this is not an expense to the town. So um, everybody just wants to wait for the next meeting. That's fine with me. Yes. I'm not, I'm, I will not vote in the affirmative no. until <laughs> I have the details. <clears throat> Now, did we need a vote on this? I'm not really sure if he, it's not like you're spending any money. It seems more like a managerial duty of, you know, administration. Um, but if, you know, the board wants to see the agreement beforehand, certainly they should I think be able that's to important it. to see the agreement. I am concerned about privacy and confidentiality. I mentioned that to Maureen, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, well, that's, I mean, and that's yeah, the chief's concern. The supervisor is as well. That was a concern yeah. of yours. It's also a concern, that's a I think concern of everyone's, ours. right. Yeah. And, and I mean, well, Alex and I have, you know, discussed this. And if it's a shared service well, agreement, yeah. I want to see the agreement. Mm -hmm. What do I agree to? I want to hear what Paul says. I was going to say, my boss always says, don't send anything in an email that you wouldn't want your mother or uh, the mm -hmm. judge to read. So, <laughs> I mean, but it's fine. We can wait. Okay. Sewer District Advisory Board update, Paul. Oh yeah, that's me. That's um, you. So we had a meeting. Uh, it wasn't a board meeting because we only really had two members. Uh, so I just wanted to get it started. Then um, I begged people to hopefully join the committee and I think I've had three or four uh, more people who are interested and then I went back to look at the law and the committee is only allowed to have five people. So there's gonna have to be a decision of those people who said, yes, I'd love to be on who uh, will get the remaining three spots. Uh, besides that, we discussed a lot of things. There was a lot of constituents and, and sewer uh, district residents and owners there. And a couple points I wanna bring to the board. One thing I was hoping, and I know it's last minute, but I was hoping the board would uh, pass tonight is, uh, I think it was in November, uh, we had extended the time for the hookups for the sewer residents uh, through the winter. Um, and we set a date of April 25th, and in our discussions, we basically said, we don't know what the weather's gonna be like, could be a bad winter, let's set it out mm -hmm. for the 25th, and then if we need to change mm -hmm. it, we can. Um, the building inspector came to the meeting last night. He said that the contractor's having problems still getting through the frost line, there's a lot of water, and that he would recommend, and there are still some people who are in the process of hooking up to extend it uh, until July 1st, everybody then who's in the process will be hooked up. And the alternative is, is that there's uh, fines upwards of $1,000 a day for not hooking up. And it's really, these guys have the contractors paid for, they're on site, they're just not able to complete the work yeah. right now. So I would hope the board would um, extend the deadline. It has no other effect than to alleviate um, the property owners because the plant is running. It has been running for the last two weeks. Uh, we've stopped doing the carting where it would all go into the uh, plant and then it would be carted out because we didn't have enough flow to actually turn the switch. The switch has been turned on a couple weeks ago, so we're going forward with that. Um, the issues that the committee or the informal discussion brought up was that there was apparently a discussion about a certain type of water meter that would be used by all um, uh, residents so that there'd be a, a fair understanding of how much water you're using and since that water meter is needed in the near future uh, they said I wasn't here at the time the law was going on that Jeff Contelmo said that we should that he was going to technically recommend or we would propose a specific meter so that everybody was on the same page um, so they were hoping for some guidance on what meters to use to uh, make their annual reporting. And, and, and no, he, they didn't say Jeff came to the board and said it here. They said that they were asking him, uh, you know, there was questions about meters and the, the answer was we need to, or it would be a good idea to set a specific type of meter so that everybody's flow is monitored equally. Some meters different than others. I, I as long as it's an approved plumbing device, I don't see how you'd favor one brand. They all read how many gallons flow through it. I assume that, but it's like, it's like I mean, and this was a concern. Just brought, a no, no, it's, it was a concern brought to me by the, the residents themselves. It's almost like having a, a thermometer and you're looking at three thermometers in the same room and one's reading a different degree than the other just because 
the individual system is just calibrated a little differently, that there could be a situation where you have a big, you know, a four, 4,000, uh, uh, you know, gallon unit who's reading 10% more than another who's, you know, is reading 10% less, and it could be a discrepancy. Did Listen, our building inspector know anything about the... He difference? jetted in and out of the meeting. He had to go to another meeting, so I didn't get to talk to him. But, and this is not a request. It's just what was brought up at the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah, so no, we should, we yeah. should discuss it. Uh, the other concerns was, and I'm sure Maureen will like this, they wanted us to reconsider uh, tipping, uh, bringing in outside uh, waste and carters uh, to the sewer district to um, hold down the costs until all the remainder flow has been eaten up. Uh, that is, I would say, is probably, it was about 12 people there, uh, near unanimous uh, position to me to bring it up to the board and have the board discuss it. There was also a request to have some sort of update on Kent Manor, uh, if we have an update on when they may be going forward or if there's a timetable. I didn't have an answer. I don't think there is. I don't know if there is any update. I don't have an idea. No. The final uh, thing that wanted to be brought up is once the committee gets uh, fully constituted, which I hope will be by next meeting, they were hoping to go out to the sewer plant and just take a look at how the operation works. Uh, one of the individuals who's looking to be on the committee works at a sewer plant in Pauling, and so there was hopefully to be a technical understanding uh, and maybe go and see the plant itself and m maybe get a, uh, you know, potentially have the operator or somebody there to explain some issues because there are a lot of questions that, you know, once they got into the nitty gritty of sewer gallon questions, I kind of had a blank uh, st <laughs> stare for that part of the meeting. So, but with that said, there was good turnout, uh, 11 to 12 people. Uh, everybody seemed to be very interested and want to air their opinion and ask questions. And so my initial hope is that we will extend the period of hookup until July 4, 1st, and then I will bring these additional issues up to if they make sense to our attorney or to the engineer or to mm -hmm. whoever they need to, and we can hopefully address them uh, in the near future. I understand the extension. The ground is very, very yeah. saturated still, and it's going to make, you know, hookups difficult. If, not, if they need another month, then... And, and it's not that we're just holding out hope that people will hook up. We have a significant amount of people who have hired the contractors mm -hmm. that have started the process. They're just not going to be able to finish. Uh, and that's what Bill Walters, he gave me a chart and, uh, and said that, you know, technically they'd be on the hook for a lot of fees. Right, and certainly when we set the date, we had no clue how difficult this winter was going to exactly. be. Exactly, exactly. That's the sewer district update. Great. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Okay, the cemetery mowing bed. We put the um, mowing of the cemeteries out for bid, and we got one bid, um, and it was significantly higher than our mowing costs have been. And so um, I consulted with our town council um, about whether it was possible for us to reject the bid and rebid and was told that it was, and at this point, I think it's in the best interest of the town. Obviously, we, we would never have budgeted the amount of the contract, so I recommend that we um, we reject the bid and we and authorize the town clerk to, to rebid. Okay, we've done the cemetery mowing. Homeland Towers assignment. Nancy, do you wanna talk about this? Um, yeah, a few weeks back we had gotten this request from Homeland Towers to assign the three um, site lease agreements to another entity called Insight Towers Development LLC. And the agreement that we have with Homeland uh, prohibits con the assignment of the site lease agreements without the town board's consent, which um, there's a couple of different phrases in the contract as to whether or not it should be, it could be not be arbitrarily withheld or unreasonably withheld. And um, Councilman Denbaum had asked me to look into what the standard was for withholding a refusal. And it's my opinion that because both, it refers to s section 72 of the general municipal law, which uses the phrase arbitrarily and capriciously. But in the same paragraph, it also uses the word unreasonably. So I think it's ambivalent. And any ambivalency in this type of agreement is usually construed against the drafter, which apparently was the town attorney when this was first drafted. So 
I think you have to stick to the unreasonable standard just to be safe. Um, the other thing it says is um, we're not required to give consent where the installation doesn't, isn't continued by an entity that's duly licensed by the government to operate a wireless communication system. So um, they had forwarded to us, I believe last week, some documentation to demonstrate that they were um, licensed to operate the facility. And prior to that, they had also sent to you some financials to show their financial stability. So I think with that, we've addressed all of the town board's concerns, um, unless someone else has another question or concern. And the, oh, the other thing was, there was some estoppel language in the agreement that we objected to, so they've taken it out. Okay. Thank you. What, why are we looking at me? <laughs> I mean, I was, you know. I, I guess it, it, is the is the section void because you know public policy via the state law would say that when a town leases property they can't withhold it arbitrarily and capriciously and this one says reasonable so I mean could the the arbitrary and capricious language went out that way I don't know I didn't really look to to uh, could have been and without looking at this contract there's probably a section in here which says that if any provision is invalid then it's deemed to be not part of the, that's what most agreements would say um, and then I think probably the municipal law would stand which is arbitrarily and capriciously so you know it's 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 unclear um, I don't know if the board objects to the assignment and if we have to worry about what standard we're using in our objection. I mean, it was contractually anticipated that it would be assigned. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with it, do you? I don't. Mike? No questions. Okay. Okay, I have an issue. I don't care what you do with the other two towers, but you have one tower in litigation, and I didn't hear anyone talk about one tower being in litigation and why you should not then give consent to assign to uh, uh, Insight. First of all, the signs are already on your towers before you even approved it. I don't know if you are aware of that. I know one of you are aware of it, that, it, that the, the signs of Insight are there. This is the modus operandi of Homeland Towers. But now you have litigation. Could go on for a year. What are they operating? My suggestion is give them the consent for the two and leave Smoky Hollow Court out of it until the last final word has been spoken about it. It makes common sense to me. Nancy? I'm honestly not familiar enough with the litigation to even know who the named parties are or what the agreement between Homeland and Insight is with respect to, you know, the litigation and its effect on its successors and assigns. So without looking into it a little bit more, I, I couldn't really comment on that. Is they, home, Homeland... They have one. Can I just... I'm sorry to interrupt. They, they, they actually... Who's the board member that knows they have Insight stuff up there or whatever? I don't... I didn't know. You said one of us knows that there was Insight... Yeah, I saw a picture oh. of the, the I mean, what's sign that, what's on... What's that about? They on, put uh, up their signs. That's no, no, now I know, being I know. I mean, I guess uh, that's Homeland asking, Towers. That's what they do. What? The cart goes before the horse. Right. I was going to contact them um, yesterday, and then I thought if we were going to vote on this this evening, it might be moot. But um, I don't know if it if it's affected by litigation. If they would even want us to sign over on off on two and then wait on a third, I don't know what I the impact of. Find out, don't you? And speaking with my counsel, it's not unreasonable when you have litigation going on to withhold the consent. I don't think we're suing Homeland Towers, so I'm not sure that we're the, the party that would be concerned with the assignment, though, mm -hmm. as far as litigation goes. No, I know something. And just on a, I don't want to say it here. I'm sorry. On a side note, mm -hmm. just so you know, your other counsel told you wrong in February when I had missed all my deadlines to file my appeal. You obviously know that I filed it in a timely manner. 